Hello, this is part two about Power BI permissions, which are managed by the users who create and publish content around your organization. In part one, we discussed concepts and walked through this diagram. Now in part two, we're going to look at what the options look like for each type of permission in the Power BI service. Let's begin with workspace permissions. This conversation is applicable to the new workspace experience. I see the settings and access menu items at the top of the page, so I know I'm dealing with an upgraded workspace. Let's look at the access specified for this workspace. There are four levels, admin, member, contributor, and viewer. In my workspace, I have each of those four levels aligned to an Active Directory group. Capabilities for each of the levels are as follows. All four levels may view content. Contributors may also publish content, save a copy of a report, and utilize shared data sets across workspaces. Put another way, the build permission, which allows users to create reports using an existing published data set, is implicitly granted to anyone with workspace permissions of contributor and above. Members also get the ability to assign workspace permissions for other non-admins. Members may also publish apps and utilize the sharing feature for individual reports and dashboards. Lastly, admins can edit or delete the workspace and assign permissions for all other workspace roles. Next, let's look at sharing. A sharing operation is done on one report or dashboard and can be thought of as an exception to workspace security. If I look at the sharing menu for this one individual report, I can share this report with a group or a user. Typically, I advise utilizing groups whenever possible, but to make it easy for us, I'll use an analyst named Sadie. Note that the ability to reshare the report is selected by default. I often deselect this, but for this illustration, I'll leave it on. The second option to allow users to build new content using the underlying data sets is also selected by default. Once we've completed the sharing operation, we can refer to the access page to see the effect. Sadie has read and reshare on this report due to the selections that we left in place. We can remove the reshare here if we like, or we can remove access entirely. We need to check the underlying data set to see the effect of the build permission that we allowed when we shared the report. In my case, the data set is in a separate workspace. See how each data set in my sales analytics workspace has a small link next to the icon. That's our visual cue, the original data set resides elsewhere. Let's navigate to my sales data workspace. On the relevant data set, I'll select Manage Permissions. Sadie's data set permissions of read, reshare, and build are a result of the report sharing operation we did earlier. Now you might be wondering why I bother with separate workspaces for sales data and sales analytics. I'll cover this in a future video more thoroughly, but the main benefit is that it allows us to control who may publish and edit reports versus who may publish and edit data sets. Essentially, it's an additional level of protection for data sets when those populations of people are different, which is particularly important for certified data sets, which usually have a formal process associated with them. Back in my sales analytics workspace where the reports and dashboards reside, Let's look at app permissions. For this conversation, we are concerned with the permissions page. There's a checkbox to allow all users to connect to the app's underlying data sets using the build permission. This will adjust the permission for the data set just like we looked at a few moments ago with the sharing operation. There is one caveat currently with apps. If your data set resides in a separate workspace, you'll have to adjust the dataset build permission separately because this currently only works if the dataset resides in the same workspace as the app. There's also a checkbox to allow users to make a copy of the reports contained within the app. You can think of this as save as type of functionality. Lastly, note that any of the users with workspace permissions of admin member, contributor, or viewer may also access the published app. However, if you only want some users to be able to see the app and not the workspace at all, that can be done using the app permissions. This offers great flexibility in situations such as when you are releasing content to a large number of users, such as the entire sales team across the entire company. 
Next, we'll take a look at a report subscription. I've removed Sadie's access from this report that we did earlier, so you can see the effect of what's about to happen here. The subscription applies to one individual report page. Notice there's a pre-selected checkbox to give access to this report. That will create a sharing operation with read access on the underlying report. If we look at the sharing access for this report, we see that Sadie has read access to the report. That got created when we generated the subscription. The recipients will receive an email like this one, which includes an image of the report page, which is also an attachment. For this reason, it's important to not create subscriptions on report pages, which include sensitive data. There's also a prominent link to the report back in the Power BI service if that was selected in the subscription. There's also an owner defined for both data flows and data sets, which indicates who most recently configured the item. This is separate from the admin of the workspace, which is also referred to as owner in some spots. The data flow or the data set owner can be seen in the settings area. Implementing row level security or RLS can be very simple and straightforward, or it can get more complicated. There are multiple techniques and what I'm showing you is an ultra simple example. In a real implementation, using dynamic RLS whenever possible is usually recommended to reduce maintenance and risk of errors. Having said that, in Power BI Desktop, I have defined a few different roles based on geographic area. This particular PBIX will be published to the sales data workspace, so the reports within this PBIX include documentation, change log, data validation, RLS testing, things like that. The real analytical reports are decoupled from the data set and will live in the sales analytics workspace. I'm always an advocate of reusing one data set across many different reports, but this is especially true when RLS is involved. While still in Power BI Desktop, before the PBIX gets published, I can use View as Roles to verify what each role will show. After the file has been published to the Power BI service, we assign members to the role using the security page for the data set. The assignment of members can only be done within the Power BI service. In my tenant, I have an Active Directory group that is aligned to each role to make maintenance as simple and error-free as possible. To test each role, hover on the role name until the ellipsis appears, and then choose the Test as Role menu item. Here's where we can verify what data will be returned for which role. Our last topic is concerned with where to store the PBIX files prior to uploading them to the Power BI service. We typically recommend OneDrive or SharePoint due to built-in versioning and backups. Here's an example of a SharePoint team site dedicated to the sales team. There's a document library for the Power BI files. The key here is that we want this area to be accessible by more than just the content author, so not in a user's private OneDrive files area. We can use the sync functionality to be able to work with these files locally very easily. Also, consider using a similar location for items exported from the Power BI service as well. This ensures that these files are stored in a secure location. I hope you enjoyed this quick tour of permissions. The intent was to introduce you to the breadth of permissions which are managed by content owners in Power BI so you can create policies auditing and training accordingly. As a reminder, this diagram I covered in part one can be downloaded on my diagrams page at CoatesDataStrategies.com. And if you like this content, please check out the training courses listed on my website. Thanks for watching and keep learning.